Shut up and sit down. Hi right, guys, I'm Dodge, this is Big Mech's Workshop and Paint Studio and today we're going well off our usual palette and we're painting the Mola Fiend as an Emperor's Children Mola Fiend. Um, you might want some sunglasses, shades or welding masks because this is going to be bright. Of course, it's been built in a uh, sub-assembly uh, because it's been in a, a previous video uh, we took a lot of the parts off and what I've started with is uh, Vallejo's Black Primer now I'm going to start pre-highlighting it with Vallejo's Grey Primer, both polyurethane, uh, go through the airbrush quite well. And what I found with this was that the uh, pre-highlight, especially for the pinks, did most of the work. Now if you uh, don't have an airbrush, um, you probably just don't pre-highlight it. And uh, if these pinks don't work out for you, Andy's going to be working on a video, I think he's nearly finished it, that's going to be up on uh, Monday with a bunch of different pinks, mainly done by uh, paintbrush. So next I'm using Game Air Squid Pink over all the uh, muscle textures. If you haven't got this, you can use Empress Children mixed with Rakoth Flesh to uh, get a similar tone there. As I was pre-highlighting the uh, armour, I've obviously gone in here and I've uh, added in big white sections for all the flesh parts. Now to actually add some colour into that because it's really pale on the camera, um, it's a bit more pink visually uh, to the eye, is Games Workshop Screamer Pink and um, that has been watered down to a wash consistency as you can tell. And uh, we're going to be quite generous with that at this point because there's going to be lots more layers to go on. We're just basically filling in the shade and it's also going to filter the uh, previous colour. As you can see, it's a much more rich pink now, more of a candy floss pink. Then we're going to use squid pink again. Mix that with a little bit of light grey. And if you don't have that, you can use the previous mix of Emperor's Children and Rakar Flesh and adding Castellian grey. No, Calestria grey, sorry. Is that right, Andy? Which, which is that light bluish grey? Calestria grey. And what we're doing with that is we are... Uh, just hitting those highlights um, on all the uh, muscle structure. Um, so I've got myself lost there. Although I do believe this is still a extra mix. I've probably just added more cholesterol grey into this or more light grey into the squid pink as we're uh, going over the highlighted areas. I know whereabouts I am now. Sorry about that guys, it's easy to get lost when you've got so many pinks written down. This is Drushi Violet, watered down a lot with a uh, water. And again, we're gonna use this as a filter. Now we're gonna go up a few colors so it's really bright and then go down, add that filter in. And uh, keep doing that for quite some time, as you can tell. You don't have to be too neat with this, um, just using a regular, I think it's a standard brush for this. And just uh, blending those in. Next is Warp Walk Purple by Game Air. If you don't have this, you can use Screaming Pink and mix it with a, uh, a purpley bright colour. But because I'm using an airbrush, you can see that pre highlights doing all the work there, and there's a transition. It looks like it's you know, warp block purple is very purple in the recesses where the black is, but it's also very, very pink where the uh, pre-highlight is. We're going to continue to do that all over the armor. And then you're going to spend a, uh, a few hours just blacking out all the uh, detail parts bit by bit. And I've just noticed I uh, completely missed that um, part on his leg there. It's not been blacked out at all. And we're just using lead belcher at this point on all the hydraulic parts. You can, you know, go a brighter colour if you want to, but I just decided to stick with Lead Belcher. It's a good middle ground to start with. We're, you, we're leaving all the piston parts a um, black at the moment because we're going to do those a different colour. There's a lot of pink and a lot of black on here and you want it to, you know, stand out. As you can also see, I spent some time going around all the um, edges of the model, blacking those out as well. 
now one of my most used metallic paints by Games Workshop and that's Brass Scorpion. Um, I'm going to try and stop using this on uh, on tutorials because you see me using it a bit too much. Uh, I'm going to try and branch out into doing some different metallic work. Possibly on the Catan that's coming up next Thursday. I'm going to try something uh, very different with that one. And we're going to give it a very generous wash of uh, Agrax Earthshade at this point. Personally, when it came to this model, I got so far through it and uh, really lost my enthusiasm for it. I don't know if you guys get that as well. You'll be halfway through a project, but um, this one was halfway done, then left on the shelf. And it's finding the motivation to go back and uh, pick up that project and carry on. You sort of lose that enthusiasm, which uh, did sort of show by the end of it in the, um, in the paint job. And of course now it's going to be warp block bronze and what we're doing here is we're basically uh, just breaking up all those metallic parts i mean if you wanted to you could just do this all one solid color and that wouldn't be an issue it's entirely up to you but i thought emperor's children bright colors um and a lot of us try and at least break some of it up so when i was looking at a bright pink blob And obviously Warp Block Proms, for those who don't know, is a Games Workshop Metallic Paint. As you can, as you can see there, I started to break everything up with the uh, silvers, the brass. And this is Brass Scorpion again, because we added an Agrax Earthshade wash to our previous one. And we're going to start glazing that over the uh, high parts of all those metallics that were done in Brass Scorpion. So there's not too much in the way of detail that needs to be done here, it's only had a couple of layers added to it. But um, <clears throat> the generous Agrax Earthshade, a Agrax Earthshade wash made it a bit dim and then you just brighten it up again with the uh, previous colour. And obviously we're going for lead belcher so we're going to use null oil uh, to get it started, get some shades in there and tone that lead belcher down a little bit. Personally I'm not a fan of very shiny metallics on anything at all. Uh, Anyone who's watched all our other videos or watched the videos that I've done, it's a very muted palette, so this was well out of my comfort zone. I sort of ended up winging most of this and just making it up as I went along. Then we're going to add a Reclam Flesh Shade. And we're going to add that a, uh, around all the joins that connect to the flesh. One, because it's going to act like a... Uh, Agrax Earthshade and sort of tint the um, metallic parts so they're not just plain silver. Secondly, it's going to add um, an extra layer of soreness and depth into those skin parts where the, uh, the cogs or whatever are uh, point sticking out of the flesh. And just, you know, give it a bit more realism and a bit more colour. Make it look a bit more sunk into the skin. Now I decided to start doing these other parts as bone, it's really up to you which, which way you want to do this. I mean if you really wanted to you could do all the uh, trim, you know, in golds, but this is just morning fang brown if I'm going to start doing bone. But I have made a note guys, I'm going to start switching up what sets of colours I use on videos, um, try and come up with some different stuff, because at the moment I'm just going to the same stuff over and over again. Do have a video coming out with some scale 75 paints. That should be interesting. And that's the uh, Talos paint engine. So I'll be doing that and giving that away at 1,500 subs. Um, next, after the morning, Fang. This is Breast Scorpion and Warp Block Bronze mixed together. It's a little bit similar to um, Rune Lord Brass. It kind of does look like Rune Lord Brass, but it's uh, a bit more rich in the, uh, you know, in the uh, brass sort of area. And I'm using that to just break up those uh, parts again on the side. So I didn't want any any part of the model to be single metallic colour, because it just looks a bit boring. Then I finally got around to picking out some of the actual muscle structure, because you've got flesh, then you've got muscle sticking through on this. So I started with a tusk of fur. And uh, just going over those quite lightly and it's really watered down because um, the previous shades and everything should show through there quite well and actually give it quite a bit of depth. 
And this definitely helps break the model up quite a lot. If you wanted to, you could go with a much more red muscle tone. But uh, I wanted to keep in that sort of pinky palette, you know. Red seemed a little bit strong. Then I'm going to use Bugman's Glow and uh, glaze up the uh, muscle structure. If I really could be bothered with this model at the time, I would have got the um, Windsor Newton Series 7 out and actually drawn more muscle structure up the legs and stuff like that. But at this point, I'd already started to lose my enthusiasm for this model. Uh, the end result is pretty good, and by the end of it, you'll see him on our uh, new 120 temple base that is uh, about to be released as well. So that'll be the first time anyone gets to see that. This is a uh, Zandri dust for all the bone parts. Now uh, this is pretty watered down. Um, it's basic bone colors, really, guys. Uh, you'll have seen this on a few other things. But the um, the morning fang that's under there is just there to uh, break up the black. Because, uh, like I said on other videos, if you want to paint over black with a bright color, paint it brown first. It'll make your life a lot easier. Then we're going to add a watered down Reclam Flesh Shade Wash to the uh, Tusker Fur and Bugman's Glow on the uh, muscles. As you can see, I've also done the teeth and the horn on the nose in the same sort of bone color. I just wanted to throw some bone parts in there because it's a very high contrast at the moment. I wanted something a little bit complementary. And then we're going to re-highlight again with Bugman's Glow. And I do I do like the result of this um, fleshy colour. I think it worked really well on Tyranids and things like that. Especially for, uh, you know, ammo sacks or other random stuff. It has a weird living sort of bio feel to it. And um, I actually regretted putting this on, but I wanted to add some shade into the whole whole lot. So I used Drushy Violet and Null Oil, like 60% Drushy Violet, 40% Null Oil. And then watered it down a, a lot, but I wanted to add a little bit more depth to all the armor plating. And that's just washed um, piece bit by bit. And you want to um, go around so you don't leave any hard lines, doing like one plate at a time. And then it's uh, to the Ushabti Bone. As you can imagine, if we've done Zandri Dust, Ushabti Bone would come next to uh, start highlighting all these bone structures. And as you can see, I'm just sort of feathering the colour on at this point. This model is also really, really difficult to, um, to hold while you're painting things without chipping paint off. It's just one of those really awkward ones. Um, Subassembly is probably your best option for this one. Now, you're going to want to edge highlight this, and I used Black Grey by Model Colour, but you can easily use the Games Workshop um, variant, which would be Eschen Grey, I think. Eschen Grey, and then highlight that again with um, Dawnstone or something like that. And that is really time consuming. Don't worry about being too neat though, because the other parts are block black, so what you can do if you make a mistake, you just go back in with the black, which is much easier. And then to uh, bring out the uh, sharper edges of that, I ended up using Sky Grey by Model Color, but uh, if you're using Games Workshop paints, you can just use a uh, Dawnstone, more than likely. And that's just a uh, Windsor Newton double zero, I think. Which I really do enjoy edge highlighting with. And they're definitely worth having in your collection if it's just for that alone. And I almost forgot the uh, vents completely. And I used sky grey for those as well, I think. Just to give them a, um, a solid colour. The underneath of this model is a, a bit horrendous when you look at it, but... Um, is not supposed to be upside down, so I wasn't too fussed about the underneath. Lazy. There's always that one guy in a shop, though, isn't there, when you're showing them a paint job who wants to turn your model upside down, although I haven't painted that bit. Screw that guy. <laughs> um, gold yellow by Model Color is an airbrushed over there, doing a slight OSL, um, as you can see. This is why I painted it the sky gray underneath. 
because the yellow is going to give a, a real high contrast because it clashes really well with purple. If you have a look at a color wheel, it's extreme high contrast and looks pretty good. Then I tried something new since we bought some new paints. I got the Troll Slayer Orange and I watered it down to a wash consistency um, around the OSL areas, mainly so it would uh, pull around the... Um, Basically because I'm a lazy gear and I wanted it to go around the edges of those without um, having to paint them in with a brush because it was awkward to get the brush in there. So I turned it into a wash and then where that's too thick there, I just clean my brush off and uh, feather it off. It works, it's fair, it works so what's it matter. And then I actually used white for the first time ever, just pure white through my airbrush and that's just a model air white. Um, that's just to add in a couple of hot spots in the centre all lined up and uh, yes there's a bit of overspray there but all I need to do is go back in over the edges of it with a gold yellow leaving the white bits in the center here we have is it snuggles we have snuggles as a uh, Empress children model on the new base which should be available off eBay next week um, and yes you can put a flight stand on that oval base it fits it's designed to do so and it's resin cast and um, yeah, that's the end result. Um, despite the fact I was being quite lazy in it, um, it looks quite good on camera. It's not too shabby. And um, I obviously didn't do the tendrils on camera because there was no need. They're just done in the exact same fashion as everything else, guys. Although those tendrils are a, a real pain to paint. They take forever. Um, so I hope you guys... <coughs> Sorry, I hope you guys uh, like the video. If you do, hit like, share with your friends, hit that subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll catch you in the next one.